Hi, this is Roger from Kanka Labs and as promised today it's about how to wind a spiderweb coil either with a template you made by your own or uh, by one of the uh, kits that we sell for these uh, spiderweb coils. Um, on the right side you see uh, my own uh, readily wound one and what you get when you buy the uh, kit uh, are the um, the pins here four millimeter banana pins uh, with a standard um, 19 millimeter distance you can see here there is a third hole because we uh, also sell a three pin coil template uh, just if you want a, a uh, either two coils uh, on one template or a coil with a center tap and I, uh, the, the uh, other parts here are of course self-explaining so it makes no difficulty without any explanation just to fix the, the uh, banana pins to the template and you additionally get this little 19 millimeter socket for the for the uh, for the spiderweb coil which if it's ready you can use that in a circuit of your own or the uh, 19 millimeter distance here is a standard distance so these uh, coils also plug directly for for example in our AM antenna tuner etc. Um, so the first thing uh, you should do is uh, just to fix the pins here to the template and now comes the important part and that is how you should wind the your coil with Litz wire. So after we've put the banana terminals or our plugs, uh, fix it with a screw and have our solar lux or uh, with the eyelets here uh, fixed. Uh, you should first of all put them in a horizontal position so later you can put some tension onto the um, onto the winding by simply pulling it a bit downward. So uh, this is the first preparation just wait a little bit for focus to come back and then the next thing is of course to put some solder and um, on the Litz wire and I've made, is, made a separate video about this um, now the method I use here is um, just um, using the solder iron at a temperature well above 350 degrees Celsius because that's the temperature where the polyurethane coating of the single strands of the Litz wire disintegrates. They are made for that so set it to 400 degrees or higher up to 450 degrees and now there's the uh, second thing to watch out for. Most Litz wires have an outer I think it's called they are silk spuns so or they, they have a silk extra silk insulation perhaps you can see this here if you draw it a little bit um, then you can get away with this um, the silk would also disintegrate um, with a hot enough solder tip so let's uh, just try <coughs> to solder the start of the Litz wire. So you see a little bit of charring here of the silk. That's the reason why you should replace it. Um, I'm not replace it. Why should, you should get away with with that at the beginning of the of the wire beforehand and be very cautious with two things. First of all, it's absolutely mandatory that every single strand of your Litz wire is tinned. Otherwise your Q factor is ruined because a single isolated strand of Litz wire acts like a short winding uh, and then you can forget about your Q factor. 
and the second is especially with very thin uh, lids wire strands um, you should put no mechanical stress onto the lids wire because then uh, a strand could break inside the uh, the lids wire and we'll see in a minute where this could become important just to put not any stress you should for example not bend it around any sharp edges that's that's a killer factor in the negative sense and uh, you should not put too much or not, not extreme tension so don't draw it, it with with large forces and so now um, we could now which i won't do here uh, we should solder now the beginning of the lids wire uh, to the solder lock to the eyelet uh, i won't do, do this here because we still want to sell here the, the template for the spider web or spiral or uh, basket weave coil um, so um, and uh, the last thing is uh, there should be no bends in the lids why it should be absolutely straight so if you usually get it on a spool and um, just watch out for that there are no bends uh, generated when uh, when you pull the lids wire from your spool so now let's uh, start with the winding as you can see i have not as you should do soldered the start of the lids wire here to the solder lock due to the reason i just mentioned to you now you're leading the wire here into the first slot uh, because i'm left-handed i started on the left side it it doesn't matter in which direction you uh, make the winding and then you just change with every slot um, from the top side to the bottom side and because we have an odd number of slots you should have uh, first of all a good tension on the wire but not too much and you see what happens here now if you um, if you take the wire from your spool there's a little loop that develops and if I would pull now in the wrong direction then uh, you get a bend here uh, so really watch out for that there are no no bends and now we see what happens when we reach the start of the winding um, in the first sector, the wire is uh, on the on the top side, and now the second turn there, it's just on the opposite side, and is that way separated by the uh, first turn um, by, uh, for the um, for the thickness of our template, which in this case is two millimeters. So that is the trick to diminish uh, the external proximity effect. And now we continue winding. And so we are now at the second turn, but the second turn is still like the first turn only now uh, on the opposite sides of the sectors and perhaps we'll bend this one a little bit down so just so that we have a little bit more space and so now we're again with the third turn again like the first turn on the same uh, side of the sectors and we continue and of course you should be counting the turns uh, you don't have to you can make a break and just uh, what I uh, did here for the videos um, I just take a, took a still picture and counted uh, in, in high resolution mode of the camera and then still counted the turns but you have to watch out half of the turns is on the on the uh, on the opposite side so if you see two 
wires on the upside, on the on the top side. Uh, we are in fact already at our fourth turn now, so you have always to double the number of um, of turns you see on on the sector. And after after a number of turns, always watch out that you have moderate tension and don't get any bends when you pull the wire from the spool. I cannot look at the moment at the control screen, so there might be a little bit of focus pumping and I might sometimes be out of the picture. And now with the fifth turn you see um, there develops a little distance between the turns. I hope you can see it. And so perhaps at every tenth, every ten turns you should push with your fingers on both sides, so just make a little break. You need time and you need patience that it looks in the end beautiful um, and that the single turns don't overlap. That's something that should, if possible, not happen, that you get overlapping turns. They should be as, well, they don't have to be as close as possible, but there should be no overlaps. So you see, it's not difficult. Uh, the two, um, the two coils you always see in my videos, which are my personal ones, they were the first attempt, and I had no manual or nobody who could tell me how this really works. And if I can do it with my two left hands, you can do it too. There is, there are perhaps. Um, Still some other tricks like I do now, just uh, with my right hand, just rotating the template. It's That's perhaps easier. And now you can see, for example, here that, um, that there is already a little separation from the turn. So if you leave too much space by not pushing the uh, the turns together again, uh, you reach at an unnecessary large um, diameter at the final turns. So that's, that's no problem, but I'll just show you my, where you reach the limit and where you really have to watch out here for the long wave um, coil. Uh, you see I nearly needed the full space available on the template and there you really have to watch out that the, the turns are as close as possible to each other. For a medium wave um, coil, if you don't have too thick lids wire, um, there's no problem because as you can see at the ready uh, readily assembled or readily wound coil. There's enough space still left. Um, but anyway, just be a little bit patient. And of course, here when the... There are no sharp edges, but if you would now put too much uh, force on the wire, then um, the Litz wire could become damaged. So, and what's a little bit difficult, you only see one side. You cannot, for every sector, turn it around. So it might be that on the lower side, there develops some overlapping or here. You see, I've, I've forgotten to push the turns together. So you can, if you just make a break every, I don't know, six or ten turns, you still can push them together uh, without overlapping. So it's not that difficult. Many people are, are, I don't know why, are afraid of um, winding coils of any kind of their own and they only make projects uh, where they can buy ready 
uh, readily wound coils. But I think that's, uh, this is really fun um, to have something in the end that you have made mostly of your own. Um, it's, uh, as I told you in another video, it's no, you could make the template out of cardboard. I would not advise this because the cardboard has very bad dielectric pro, uh, properties or in other words then the cardboard uh, ruins your Q factor and you should use uh, if possible poly polystyrene if you get a, a blank piece of uh, polystyrene plastic uh, you can of course with a little jigsaw uh, make 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 the template of your own just uh, uh, saw use the saw to make the slots or slits however you want to call them and just have to concentrate a little bit just to okay this is not not of course it's only for demonstration so if I make a mistake that's uh, that won't ruin my day here and uh, so you see uh, it for the medium wave coil it doesn't take um, too much uh, time you should be ready in less than an hour the long wave coil with the many hundreds winding that took me some hours and I even uh, think I made a break overnight um, because at some point you lose your concentration and you you make errors in counting the, the turns so uh, no problem at all so if we if you reach I will now make it a little bit faster um, there's one question left open so and if you're ready as I, as I told you in another video you should make um, at least 10% more turns than you've calculated or uh, with with our uh, spreadsheet or if you take the data from a graph or for, from somebody else, make at least 10% more turns than um, when you have your coil ready. Um, just you, you don't have to fix it, just um, solder the other end, measure the inductance, and if it's too large, it's no problem to um, to unwind the, uh, the uh, some turns if you found out that there is uh, too much, um, but it's it's not a good idea if you have too few turns and you cannot. Um, well, it, in theory, it's possible just to solder two ends of the lids wire together again, but it's really not a good idea. Um, so make more, some more turns, at least 10% more turns than you think is necessary and m measure the inductance and then unwind the too many turns. And as I told you in another video, um, because the inductance goes with the square of the turns, if you measure 20% too high inductance, don't unwind 20% of the turns, but only half of that, 10% of the turns, or perhaps a little bit less, uh, perhaps only 8%. Um, measure again, and um, that should be it. Uh, the final question is, if you use a... Um, a coil with a either a secondary winding or a tapped coil uh, that's also no problem let's just get the winding here to the end then you just um, have your third banana uh, plug and the, the corresponding solder lug or eyelet here uh, you solder it to it and you just uh, continue then from the solder lug you just continue the winding 
Uh, you could also, uh, so that would be a tapped winding. You could also make a totally isolated second uh, winding, uh, but we only have three taps. So you basically you you sh the easiest way is to use a to make a tapped winding. You should not put a second uh, winding onto the primary winding. That is possible, but I would not advise this. Advise you uh, this just um, here. You can also make a simply a little sling here for later soldering, and then you just continue. Just of course you have to fix it here where you re-enter the slots. You can use a little uh, adhesive tape just to uh, just to fix the little. Is it is it called sling? Um, think so and you then you continue your winding just uh, but just watch out for that it continues on the right side let's see here it would have been down so you see I made a mistake uh, here it came uh, to the bottom side and we then have to continue on the top side but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be so super important if you made um, one turn on the wrong side but um, if I even can do it now while at the same time thinking speaking and translating in my head from German to English then uh, you can do it with a little with when you have patience and uh, are sitting alone in your lab or kitchen or whatever so it's really not difficult you can see during talking here I've made at least uh, well how much will it be 10 turns out of the the 48 which would be necessary here for 170 micro Henry's with this this slits wire so it's really easy and uh, for me it was really fun to have my privately own wound spiral or spider web or basket weave coil there are many names for this thing so i think that was it for today i have no idea what i should still uh, tell you about the spider web coil so thanks for watching i uh, hope you liked it and uh, see you next time here at kanker labs bye from roger bye from kanker labs <laughs>